In this video, we're going to be testing out hot new drugstore makeup. Hello and welcome, or welcome back. My channel is mostly about makeup, skincare and fashion for the over 50 woman, or in my case, late 60s. So without further ado, let's get on with the drugstore makeup. Right, let me put my hair out of the way. I recently had a fringe cut and I'm still getting used to it. Oops, there we are. That's better. Now I've also changed the lighting a bit here. So if you are, if you are a regular viewer, I'm hoping that the lighting, well, even if you're not a regular viewer, I'm hoping that the lighting works because I've de decided to sit in front of my window, but I'm not directly in front of it because otherwise my background wouldn't look quite as interesting as it does. I don't know if it does. But anyway, so I've got lighting over here, which is artificial, and I've got my window over here. So I'm really hoping, particularly as the sun's out, so that you get the best possible view of how this makeup is going to look on my 69 year old skin. Right, we're going to start with the e.l.f. Halo Glow. Now this I am new to and it's been around for quite some time and I'm sure you've come across it before on other channels and it's meant to be a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter which I've had for years actually but I must admit I don't use it all that much. Anyway, I thought I would try this partly because I'm starting to use a primer more. So today we're not going to use a dedicated primer more. We're going to use the e.l.f. Halo Glow as the primer. And I have tried this out before just once or twice and I was quite impressed with it. So we're going to apply this and while we do that, let me tell you a bit about it. I am, by the way, in the shade, what am I in the shade? I'm in the shade light medium. Oh, it comes with this massive doe foot. I think this doe foot might be even bigger than the Charlotte Tilbury. So I'm just going to plop it on. Plop, that's a technical term. <laughs> I'm going to place it on my face like this. So this comes in 12 shades and it contains squalane and hyaluronic acid. And I'm using a damp beauty sponge. I may have gone slightly overboard with it actually. I might have to wipe a bit off because I can immediately see I am super glowy. However, I think you can see that it does start to smooth out any imperfections on my skin, which is quite textured these days. I mean, it is 69, so it's not surprising really. And it is giving quite a nice glow. I mean, I think that's pretty good. Now, before we put the foundation on, we're going to use an eye primer. And those of you who've watched my channel before will know I'm always on the lookout for an eye primer. And maybe it's partly the way I apply it, but I haven't had a huge amount of luck because I have very oily eyelids and I also have very creased area here, particularly on this right eye, your left, which just bunches up. And whatever I put on it, it just creases immediately. You can see it. You can virtually see it settling into the fine lines there as you apply it. But anyway, we're going to try the Wet n Wild. This is it here. It is called the Mega Last Eyeshadow Primer and it contains synthetic beeswax and dimethicone, which helps to smooth the skin surface and has a velvety feel. So we like the sound of that, don't we? And it comes in a little tube. So I'm just going to pop a little bit on this finger here. It has got some colour, so it's slightly tinted. And what I'll do is I'll put a little bit on either finger like that and then I'll just apply it gently on the lids. Now this is the bit that gets the wrinkles or the settling into fine lines. It does feel very nice on my fingers. By the way, if you notice this middle finger here is looking rather fat. It's because it seems to have swollen up overnight. I don't really know how. I must have knocked it, but I don't remember doing that. So it's okay. It's slightly painful, but it, I don't think I'll be able to get my rings off. Anyway, we'll see how we go. Okay, there we are. It's on the lids. It does feel velvety. I must say it feels very, very nice indeed. So we're going to let that set and we're going to put the foundation on now. Now, I'm quite excited about this foundation because my lovely friend Tina of Tina H, Her Beautiful Journey, and I'll link her channel down below for you in the description box and the video in which she talks about this because she has recently reviewed this foundation, which is actually called a skin tint. It's Maybelline Superstay 24-hour skin tint with vitamin C comes in 18 shades and I'm in the shade 6.5. So Tina's skin is very oily, so it's not like mine. I do have a little bit of an oily T-zone sometimes, but most of the time my skin is normal. 
she is also much younger than me she's in her mid to late 50s I think and her review was really interesting so as I say I'll link it down below for you and do go and watch that if you've got oily skin now it comes in a dropper which I hate I don't really know why but they seem to be a thing about skin tints coming in droppers particularly drugstore skin tints this retails for $13.99 or $13.98 in dollars it comes in 18 shades it's vegan and it's supposed to last 24 hours. I don't think any of us at our age particularly are going to be wearing foundation for 24 hours, but you never know. I mean, back in the day, I used to leave my makeup on when I went to bed, partly because I think my mum used to do that. In fact, my mum used to take me to school. I must just tell you this while I'm applying this, I'll tell you. My mum was an actress. If she was doing theatre, which she was doing quite a lot of in the 60s, she would go to bed with her makeup on. Now I'll put a couple of drops on here. She'd go to bed with her makeup on and then she'd rush me to school in the car wearing her fur coat over her nighty, if you please. And last night's makeup giving her panda eyes. And we were always late, so it wasn't great for me as a kid. I used to feel quite uncomfortable about it. But happily, she never got out of the car with her nighty and mink coat on. But that was the 60s and she was quite an unusual woman. Now what I thought I'd do is I'm going to apply one side of my face with a brush and the other side with a sponge and let's see how we get on. So we'll do the right side which is your left with a brush using our pouncing method. I don't actually have a drugstore foundation brush so I'm cheating a bit here but mostly we are using drugstore well we are using all drugstore products except maybe our tools although the sponge that I'm going to use in a minute is very very reasonably priced that was from Boots I think it was only one pound something we'll just dot some on the other side and then we'll use a damp beauty sponge couldn't actually remember because I was nattering away there couldn't remember whether I'd actually put any on oh well right so here we go right I'll just finish off with a beauty sponge on this side as well because I always like to do that even if I've used a brush. I'm rather liking that. In fact I said it was a bit pale but actually I'm not sure it is pale now that I see it in natural light. It's not that. It's not looking that different to my neck is it really? Maybe it's the halo glow underneath that's given it a bit of a darker hue as it were. Well I must say I'm very impressed with that finish so far. Now I should have said actually this foundation contains alcohol and you can you can actually smell it. It's a bit like the L'Oreal. Gosh, what was the famous L'Oreal one? I've forgotten the name of it. But that's most L'Oreal foundations tend to contain alcohol. Certainly the ones in the droppers. But it doesn't really bother me because my skin isn't too dry. I think if you had dry skin, you might want to avoid it. But I don't know. I think maybe if you've got a primer underneath, it might be okay. Right, on to concealer now. And I have got the Revlon Colorstay Skin Awaken Concealer. Again, this says it's 24 hours. We're not too worried about that. Although, of course, my mum might have found that helpful had she had the opportunity to wear this because then she could have woken up in the morning and looked fab. Now, this comes in 14 shades. It retails for $9.99. Now, it's got this rather annoying sponge applicator, which I'm not keen on. So I'm just going to put some on my skin like this you can actually squeeze the tube I probably put too much now but you can just squeeze the tube out onto your hand and do it that way now in terms of shades I've gone the opposite way with this one I've actually chosen a shade that's a bit too dark it's so difficult to tell online isn't it particularly for the cheaper brands I think and if you're buying it from Amazon it's particularly difficult but anyway that's what we have got so that's what we're going to work with and I'm just going to dot a little bit under my eye like so. Oh, not looking what I'm doing there. Made a bit of a pig's ear of that. Well, I probably put far too much on. I'm just going to let that settle for a minute. And let me just tell you that this is a medium to full coverage concealer. Right, we've given it a few seconds to settle. And what we're going to do is I'm going to use this BK Beauty Nikki LaRose brush, the number is, I think it's 14. I think it's 14, I can't remember the name. Again, I'll put it on the screen for you. Now this is a concealer brush, and what I really like about it, and I know this isn't drugstore, but, but I think it's worth talking about anyway, because it's not super expensive. I think it was about 
20 pounds or something what i really liked about it is it's really feathery can you see the top of it is very very feathery and it's supposed to mimic your fingertips i mean not that our fingertips are feathery but it's sort of the light touch that's really what it's trying to mimic you can apply it like this it means you're not going in heavy-handed with a sort of heavier brush which i think is quite effective although i do have to go in with a sponge afterwards but it does sort of feather it a bit okay so we've sort of spread it spread it spread it out even and now we'll go in with a damp beauty sponge can you see i think that's looking pretty good actually so just that using that brush to begin with or as i say you probably could use your fingers and then just lightly going over it with the sponge right that's the concealer on and now we are going to powder and we're going to use the wet and wild photo focus translucent powder now this retails for 6.95 or 6.49 dollars it's silky smooth and weightless and it says it can be used to mattify absorb oil or bake I don't like the sound of bake I'm not sure I'm not sure I want to bake do you that's not really what I want powder for anyway the reason I chose this was because I think I'm right in saying that Risa does makeup use this on her mum and she thought that it was a really good powder for mature skins so that's why we're trying it today and and I put a little bit in the lid so we've got a little velour powder puff I love these sorry it's a bit grubby don't tell anyone and we'll just pick up a little bit now I do have to be a bit careful I don't overdo so let's just tap that a bit so we don't overdo the powder yeah that should be fine and then we're going to just go in here and gently press very very gently now actually as we're speaking I, I've noticed that rather a lot of settling into my creases here but I'm not sure that that is the foundation. I think that's just the fact. Well, I mean, it is the foundation, obviously, but I'm not sure that other foundations wouldn't do the same thing. I'm afraid that my lines are just looking more and more deep or becoming more and more deep as I get older, which is not altogether surprising. I am using the nearer and I am going to report back on that. In fact, somebody was asking me that in the comments yesterday. When was I going to report back? This is a Nera laser that I was gifted a few months ago and I had to stop using it because I had an eye operation here. I had a, a condition called entropion where my eye rim was turning inwards and I had to have an operation to correct that. And so I stopped using the laser and I certainly didn't want to use it around my eyes. And I started to use it again, but I want to give you a four month review because um, because Gemma of Pampered Wolf said, give it four months. I think she said, or oh, 120 days, whatever it is. So that's what I'm going to do. So I will be reporting back at the end of the month. I think it will be 120 days. Anyway, there we are. That was a little nearer interlude. Now, now I think what we'll also do, let me just pick up a little bit more, is we will go down and powder here a little bit because I've noticed on camera in particular I can look really quite oily which I I don't like and so obviously how you look on camera isn't going to be exactly the same as how you would want to look in real life but after I've applied the makeup I will go out in natural light and show you what the makeup looks like just so that you can see and I'll insert that towards the end so stay till the end and you'll see the finished look outside as well as inside. In fact, the sun's gone in anyway, although it's still relatively light, but it's not, not great. Okay, there we are. So we've powdered now using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent Powder. Right, now on to bronzer. Now this is a bronzer I've had for a while, so it isn't new, but I haven't actually used it for ages and it is the NYX Matte Bronzer, and I have it in the shade Deep. It comes in five shades and it costs, and it costs nine pounds. So this is deep, it is quite deep. And actually, let me just swatch a bit for you on my wrist so you can see how deep it is. 
because it's always a bit of a difficulty for me to find a bronzer that isn't too orange but I think this is quite a good shade in fact it's not dissimilar I think to the Bobbi Brown Stone Street which I think was the first bronzer I ever bought actually and it's also shimmer free this powder now I'm going to apply it with this Sephora brush this nice Sephora angled brush and I'm going to use it kind of like a contour sort of a mixture of a contour and a bronzer so we're going to put a bit here a bit under here I quite like putting it in here rather than up here because it gets a bit crowded up here with all the blusher and if you were going to use highlighter as well so that's what I prefer to do at the moment anyway and then I'm going to get my kabuki brush and just blend that in like so And you can see it's quite nice and matte and any doubts that we might have had about whether the foundation was a bit too pale will have been overcome by using the bronzer I think and just giving a bit of definition to the face okay I'm liking that very much now let's go in with blush and I'm going to use the elf primer infused blush now unfortunately this shade has been discontinued I think I bought this a year or two ago and this shade is called Always Preppy, but they don't actually have this shade anymore, but they do have some other very nice looking shades. Elf is a fantastic brand, as you know, I'm sure it's vegan, it's cruelty free and very reasonably priced. This is seven pounds. I'm gonna use the same brush actually, don't tell anyone, just as easy really to apply my blush. Oh, and this has got vitamin C and jojoba oil. I'm gonna pinch a trick from my lovely friend, Cindy, of Beyond 50 Skin, who did a video recently where she, I think she was talking about makeup mistakes and she suggested coming under your, under your eye a little bit, which I thought was rather a nice idea, rather than coming too far down here, because that can be a bit aging. But obviously it looks a bit weird at the moment, but we're gonna blend it out. So let's just see how that looks. Yeah, I think that looks great. Right, now we're on to brows, and I've talked about this pencil before, so this is not new to me. This is the Wet n Wild Retractable Brow Pencil, and I have it in the shade Taupe. And those of you who are new to my channel might not know, I have gone back to not darkening my brows too much. I don't know why I went so dark. It was earlier, it was late last year. I suddenly decided I needed darker shades, but actually it really didn't suit me at all. It made me look, it, it was too harsh, but my actual hair colour was dark brown but ashy. It wasn't actually a particularly nice colour. So I think having very harsh brows was just going to end up making me look a bit Groucho Marxy, to be honest. Especially when I have my glasses on. Now, I have not actually found, even though I've had my brows laminated, I haven't found that I really need to wear a wax. I mean, I have been wearing one, but not lately because I don't find I need it. It's only when I very first had them laminated and I have them done, I've had them done twice, I think over the last sort of few months. Because it straightens them, it makes them fall down immediately. And so that's where you need a wax. But actually after a couple of weeks, I found I didn't need it at all. And now comes the really exciting bit, the palette. Ooh. Now this is a palette by Wet n Wild and it's called Always Blushing. And these shades just really spoke to me. I think that's an absolutely stunning palette. Now, because it's difficult to get hold of in the UK, I have actually found another Wet n Wild palette that's very similar, and I've linked that down below for you. Now, I practiced a little bit with this one, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my fingers, and then I'll just use a blending brush to blend. Because I can get closer to my eyelids with my finger, there isn't a sort of third party in the way. It just makes application much easier for me. So we're gonna start with this shade here, which is a kind of a nice lilac-y. Do you say that was a lilac-y shade? I think so, actually, let me just swatch a tiny bit for you there and you can see, yeah, there you go. So that shade, I can't remember what it's called, but I'll put it on the screen. And that's the shade we're going to go for on the lids. So this is about as matte as it gets, I would say. It's got a slight sheen to it, but it's pretty matte. So that's the shade we're gonna use as a base color. Then what we're gonna do is use this beautiful color here. Look at this. Let me just show you and swatch a bit for you. It's a kind of a, what would you call that? An aubergine maybe, or eggplant if you're in the States. And the pigment's pretty good, isn't it, wouldn't you say? 
I think those two shades look absolutely beautiful. So let me just pick up a bit more on my finger. And what I'm going to do, I can see there's some fallout, I'll deal with that in a sec. So I'm going to pull my eyelid up and just place this here. There, can you see? Right, let's get rid of the fallout. Now we're going to do some blending. We've got clean Sephora brush here. Just hold this up. You can see what sort of elephant hidey. Oh, of course, I'm rubbing it all off now. <laughs> I think I need to just go back in again because I've, I've over blended. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Now, I think what we might do, because this palette is so beautiful, we might take one of the shimmer shades. I mean, I don't know whether they're shimmer or glitter. I suppose that's the glittery one, isn't it? I don't really use glitter. So we're not going to go with glitter, but a sort of topper. That's what we want, really. Let's see what this one's like. I don't think that's glitter, is it? That's more like a shimmer. That's really pretty. So let's put a little bit of that on the centre of the lid. I don't know, maybe it is glittery. I don't know. It is. There is some fallout, but not too bad. Okay, so now let's do eyeliner. I must admit, I don't love this eyeliner, but I'm going to show it to you anyway, because it is a little bit like a sort of much more drugstore version of the Victoria Beckham because it's got, because it's a retractable pencil on one side and then it has this, hmm, it keeps coming off and it has the little spongy, the little spongy thing on the other end. Now, I just can't get much of a purchase from this. And I, in fact, oh, actually having said that, it's come out perfectly now. It has been quite unwaxy if there is such a thing. It just hasn't been very smooth to use. That's what I'm trying to say in my very stupid way. It just wasn't going on very smoothly. So, but we are gonna try it today. Now I'm not doing tight lining anymore and I'm not actually doing much in the way of a big thick liner, but we are going to apply a little bit because I do think it just finishes off the eye a bit. So we're gonna start in the corner here, just very gently. See what I mean? I am applying it, but it's not coming out quite as easily as I would have liked, or it's not going on quite as easily. Right, I'll take the smudger and we'll just see if we can, without disturbing the eye, without disturbing the eyeshadow too much. Yeah, well it'll do, but it's not the best, is it? Right, now we're gonna go in with mascara and I've got here the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift Mascara in black, which is $12.99 or $11.78 in dollars. Now this is quite an unusual brush. It says it's two-sided. I must admit, I find their description quite difficult because it says apply the mascara by using the front hook bristles to lift and coat your lashes and then use the side hook to comb and separate. Now, I don't really know which is the front and which is the side. I mean, that is a completely flat bit there. And then if you turn it that way, you've got some bristles, as it were. I mean, I just don't really understand that. But anyway, we'll see if we can make it work in the way that they describe. So the first thing we're supposed to do is use the front hook to lift and coat. Now, I would say, yes, I would say that makes sense. That's the flat bit. Right, and then we use the side to lift and separate. Hmm. Don't know about that really. It seems a little bit complicated, but anyway. Yeah, it's kind of. I think what we'll do is we'll leave that for a couple of mins and I think we'll just go on to lip pencil. I'm using the NYX lip pencil in nude beige. Let's just hook this on. Right, let's go back to the lashes and put a final coat on. Right, there we are. I'm not mad about it, but it's okay. It's not really giving me the va va voom that I would like, but it's all right, we'll live with it. Right, we've had some quite serious fallout from the shadows. What I should have done is done the eye makeup first and then put on the foundation and the halo glow and all of that, but I didn't do that. But not to worry, we'll just do a little touch up. 
Yeah, I think that looks better. I think there might be a little bit of a remaining glistening from the palette, so forgive me for that. Right, so the final pièce de résistance are the lipsticks, and I've got a Revolution Pro lipstick and a, just a simple Revolution lipstick, and they both come in fantastic cases. Look at this beautiful case. So this one is in the shade Velvet. I literally tried it on for about two seconds yesterday, and it's a satin matte finish. And this one, I mean, look at this beautiful case. Look at this. This one is just a simple Revolution. And I've got it in the shade Chauffeur, which is a very strange name for a lipstick, I think. But anyway, and this one comes in nine shades and it's five pounds. They're both amazingly reasonably priced. So let's try Velvet on first. This is the satin matte finish. So let's give this a go. My lips are a bit dry at the moment, sorry. So that is the, oh, mm, that feels lovely on the lips. It's very creamy. Right, let's try this one on. This is Chauffeur. So a slightly warmer tone, but it is, it is very me. I do like these sort of shades. And again, it feels very comfortable on the lips. Now, what do we think of the product? So let's start with the e.l.f. Halo Glow. I think it gives a really lovely sheen to my skin. So really enjoyed using this product. I will be playing about with it a lot more, so I'm sure I'll come back and talk about it again in the future. Now, the foundation, I was a bit worried about this. I thought it might be a little bit too heavy, even though it calls itself a skin tint. It doesn't really feel or look, I don't think, like a skin tint. It definitely feels more like a foundation to me. But I am quite impressed with how it's looking. And I know I mentioned about my concern that it was settling into my creases here, but actually... I don't think it's looking bad at all. I really don't. Let me know what you think. I think it's looking pretty good and it's a very reasonably priced product and it seems to suit all skin types. Possibly if you were dry, you might want to think about maybe if you have very dry skin, it might not be appropriate for you. But certainly as we know from Tina, her skin is oily and she got on very well with it. And my skin is normal, a little bit dry at times, a little bit combination at other times, and it certainly seems to be suiting me. Absolutely love the Wet n Wild powder. Think it's really great, very easy to use as long as you're not too cat handed Just be very gentle. You only need a little bit. But again, I don't think it's caked out the foundation in any way. From what I could see when I was filming myself outside, it looked pretty good in the natural light. So really impressed with the Wet n Wild powder. Now, in terms of eyeshadow, I really love this palette. I think it's great. The only problem is, I think, with the glitters is there is a lot of fallout. And that, that light shade that I used obviously was a glitter because there was a huge amount of fallout and it took me quite a while to get rid of it all. In fact, I'm not sure I have got rid of it all. But it's got the most beautiful colours. I really, really like it as a palette. And it's very reasonably priced. And I suppose if you stay away from the glitters, you'll be fine. I just love the tones of the palette, the shades this colour story. I just think it's a really beautiful and reasonably priced palette. And I'll definitely be playing around with it again. Now the eyeliner, I'm not mad keen on, I must say. I didn't find it went on very well on my eyelids. It was okay on my hand, but that's not the same as applying it on your eyelid where my skin is very crepey and I want something that glides like the Lisa Eldridge or the Victoria Beckham and this isn't it. And again, with the mascara, it was okay. I didn't love it. I felt I had to work quite hard to achieve the look that I've got. And yeah, my lashes look all right, but I don't love them. It's not the sort of va va voom I'm looking for. Now, the bronzer and the blusher I've had for quite some time, and I like them very much, and I think they've gone really well with the overall makeup look today. And the lipsticks, I absolutely love them. They both feel fantastic on the lips. They're so reasonably priced. The shades are perfect, and I might actually get some more shades. So really impressed with these lipsticks. Now, the concealer. I think this is a really reasonably priced and effective concealer. I probably would have chosen a slightly lighter shade, but I think it's gone really well. I think my under eyes look nice and smooth, as smooth as they're going to look for such aged skin and really impressed with this. I think it's a really good reasonably priced concealer. So what do you think? Do you think these products worked on my over 50 skin? Let me know in the comments, have you tried them or would you try them? I'd be really interested to know. And if you've enjoyed this video, I'd be so grateful if you'd subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Oh, and don't forget the notification bell so that YouTube lets you know each time I upload a video, which I'm endeavoring to do twice a week. And if you can't get enough of me, 
I have a monthly newsletter and in that I don't just talk about beauty, fashion and lifestyle but I also talk about books, music, podcasts, movies, TV and all the other bits and bobs that make our lives worthwhile. And thank you so much for watching, it means the absolute world to me, it really does. And I hope you're all doing really well and I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye!